Hi guys and welcome to my review of the IVPIQ V12 uh, actually to be more precise uh, IVPIQ Conch V12 uh, what is the V12? Well the V12 is part of a, of, a, of a new series of IEMs which is comprised of the V11, the V12 and the V13 the V13 which is a 2 plus 2 I recently reviewed the V11 is the one I will be reviewing uh, after I finish this one which is an 8BA uh, IEM and this one is a 2DD plus 6 uh, BA uh, IEM uh, from IVPIQ. Uh, and, um, you know, um, they've uh, once again um, tried to, to bring us something uh, novel to a certain extent uh, and at the same time have their own flavor, their own house kind of uh, touch. Um, which I have to say that they are um, being very successful in doing. Um, the V13, which I reviewed recently, has got a lot of similarities to the quartet. Um, I personally even think that it's probably made in the exact same factory. Um, but um, uh, at least uh, the, the one thing that I, I will give IVPIQ is that they were uh, clear about what was the configuration of uh, the, the, the V13 while um, QE years always left uh, a little bit in the air uh, exactly what was going on. They say it's two dynamic drivers in a Soberic or solo Beric or some sort of a fancy technical name that they give it. Uh, well, for me, there's just two drivers in a coaxial setup, period, end of story. And that's exactly what's uh, on the V13. It's two drivers in a coaxial setup, which we also find that same coaxial setup over here in the in the V12. Um, and then uh, in the V13, we have two BAs to match up the rest of the frequency range. While over here, we've got six BAs, which uh, obviously enables the, the, the sound to be more divided uh, and, and better divided between all the drivers and optimized all right um anyway let's get straight into this and show you um the case that uh, ivpiq brings well is a case like this one simple uh, the im comes inside it brings a cable which is well i opted for this cable and they were kind enough to actually uh, let me have this cable instead of the stock one, which is a good ca cable, mind you. The stock cable is a cable like this one. So that's that's a, a, a nice cable. Um, I, I prefer this cable. I just uh, it's, it's a cable. It's part of their new series. And I just thought it just matched the, the, the V12 nicer. Uh, as for the IMs, it's... Um, a little bit, I mean, the shell is a full resin, 3D printed, a very nice build quality. Uh, simple faceplate with the IVPIQ logo there, uh, branding rather there. Um, and, and it's solid, it's, it's, it's nice. You can slightly look inside of the actual IEM, very, you know, very, you can just get a glimpse of what's inside there. Um, a venting hole of, over there, as you can see. A two pin connector and that's it in terms of fit flawless much like the v13 the fit of the v12 is um, you know spot on um, I am using these comply tips um, because I preferred the sound with the comply tips as opposed to the silicones although I did use the silicones and the reason why I'm actually mentioning this whole comply tip is not so much because of the of the sound although yes that was the reason that led me to use them it's that with the silicon tips i'm actually able to introduce the im deeper into my ear canal uh, and it sits you know in, 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 a, in a more flush manner because this is a relatively large im uh, with the uh, complies I, I cannot uh, you know ram it inside my ear canal as much so it will kind of sit a little bit outside of my of of my ear let's put it that way so it's a little bit more prominent so i just thought it'd be important for me to um, bring that out so if you're using silicone tips you can put it in deeper if you've got uh, foams it's not going to sit in deeper um, well uh, I guess maybe they would if you would use a smaller foam but with a smaller foam I wasn't getting a good seal so I, opt I had to opt for the large uh, sized uh, complex um, so that's basically it uh, solid build looks you know decent classy I would have liked a little bit more of, a little bit more pizzazz you know you have a little bit more of a, of a flavor 
um, but it's fine. It's nothing really. It's not a deal breaker in any sense. Where where it counts, it it's it has scored the the and ticked all the right boxes, which is in the sound. Um, and that's it. So accessories are very basic. It brings a decent cable, which is big to be expected. It brings a case. There's no other extra packaging. No fancy box with waifus or anything of the sort. I'm guessing maybe in the future they will, um, you know, start doing something with regards to that. I actually honestly feel that. The, these series of IMs deserve it. These series of IMs really do deserve. Did really do deserve that IVPIQ spend a little bit more time in the actual appearance of the, of the of the provided packaging because you know the the eyes uh, will will um, be the first ones to to grasp uh, or and to uh, have their attention um, taken. So uh, you know it, it, it's got to look uh, a little bit more appealing in my opinion. Um, and that's basically it. Okay, so what have I got here? I've got I've selected four IEMs, not uh, not in an attempt to uh, grade this one with them in the sense of, oh, this is better than that one or better than that one or, or not as good as that one. No, in, in the sense of wanting to try and position it with these IEMs because three of them, uh, the uh, High Senior Okavango, the Sandra MSR7, and the ISN H50, they have a signature, a sound style, which is very much the sound style here of the uh, V12. While the Quintet, I've brought it out because I thought it'd be interesting to compare the Quintet, which has a different approach to the whole sound um, signature uh, to the to the V12, and, and compare the two of them, so you guys could have an idea. Um, before I get into more detail, let me just say that. The H50 has been one of my favorite IEMs for a long, long time. I think it's an absolute beast of an IEM that never really got enough love. An IEM which uh, later came out, which uh, can be tuned to have a very similar sound to this, is the MS5 from Hydez. Absolutely fantastic IEM as well. You can tune it, if you choose the right tip and the right nozzle, you can tune it so that it is exactly, I mean, almost 100% like the H50. Okay, the other one is the SR7, which I think is a great IM. Um, it's only minor flaw, if we want to call it a flaw, is that I would have preferred if they had kept the price in the lower three hundred dollars. I think that would have helped, kind of, uh, you know, project the sales a little bit more. But I mean, that's just my opinion, and my opinion is worth what it's worth. So take that with a grain of salt. Otherwise, where it counts, it's a fantastic game. It sounds really good. It's the polar opposite of, for example, the 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 Performer Eight, the Full Performer Eight, which the Full Performer Eight is all about being correct and very audiophile correct. This is about being fun. Actually, all of these three. Uh, or about being very fun in the way they present music. They've all got nice big bass, and that's what they they they, they do well, you know. And then the Okavango, which again, you know, uh, fantastic idea. This this has got tuning switches. This has got tuning switches. No switch. No switch. No switch. Um, to better kind of just give a uh, an overview of those as well, uh, of those IEMs, and then making uh, comparisons here with the with the. Um, V12. Let me just say that uh, what I'm about to say about the SR7 and the Okavango is about is, applies to both of them. Um, the uh, SR7 uses a 9.2 millimeter driver, and then it uses two uh, uh, Knolls uh, 33518s and four Sonians, which is basically the same setup you get on the Okavango. Although in the Okavango it's a 9.5 millimeter driver. Um, as I'm in terms of build quality, it's, it's flawless. Any one of these, it's got impeccable build quality. And, and the sound of build, both of these is a little bit L-shaped. So you've got a, a nice, uh, very, um, very uh, lush bass, um, which, it, it's, which, which has got a nice thick note weight to it, but it's all very, it's all very, um, um, very appealing, very, very organic, okay? Um, Sub bass on either one of them is there. It's it's there, but the, the focus is more on the on the on the mid bass. The the focus is more on that area between let's say sixty and one hundred and fifty is where two hundred. That's where the, the the focus of the bass is for these IMs. Below sixty, yes, you do find a little, you do find that they are also capable of going 
there, but it's it's not where they they are on their uh, at, at their on their best. Let's put it that way. Uh, either one of them has got absolutely fantastic mids. The mids are full bodied. They've got great vocals. Male and female vocals are amazing. Um, and then technically. Um, Timbre and tonality, I think, is impeccable in either one of them. Um, detail retrieval is acceptable. Uh, the soundstage is nice and wide. Uh, I would say that uh, the imaging is probably the one that's a little bit... Uh, not on the level of what you would expect. I mean, this is $369, that's $299. So the, at those values, you, you can expect a little bit more in terms of imaging. So overall, I would say that the technicalities are adequate for the price that we are talking about. So soundstage is good, uh, timbre and tonality is good, uh, while detailed retrieval and imaging are okay. Uh, so, you know, the final score is a, an acceptable technical ability for either one of them, you know, considering their price. Um, what more can I say? And that's basically it. So they've got a, they both got a very fun sound that when actually you, you boost the bass with the, the switches, uh, which is switch number one, it, it actually becomes overly thick. It uh, bleeds a little bit into the mids uh, or bleeds in a more significant manner into the mids, which then camouflages the sound and closes it down somewhat. So the setting I've used on either one is zero one. Uh, and in that setting, that they, they both sound amazing. I mean, you know, like I said, it's, it's a really, really nice, rich sound with fantastic mids above all and this 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 very organic very old school kind of tonality to that to them um the uh, h50 um you know the the first thing that uh, jumps to you when you listen to the h50 is the bass the bass is again it's lush it's 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 got a nice impact to it very while over here we have a somewhat forward sounding um, uh, 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 you know, but rich sound over here. We have a very neutral kind of sound. So the you know the the, the mids come across the, you know the ISM pedon style, very relaxed, very smooth. But um, that doesn't mean that they are boring in any way. No, male and female vocals are fantastically done. Uh, there's no fatigue, there's no harshness, timbre and tonality again spot on. So very much that kind of old school organic type of sound. Uh, it's again in the technicalities where um, the H50 is not at its best. So yes, fine. The the, the sound stage is is it's uh, it's wide, it's big, but the imaging is okay, uh, and the detail retrieval as well is again okay. So technically, these three um, are setting the stage for what actually is also the same situation here on the um, on the V12. Technically, uh, it's got a great sound stage the sound stage is not a problem it's got okay imaging uh it's got okay detailed retrieval and then it's got again very nice timbre and tonality so in that aspect the v12 basically matches the technical capabilities of those three however the difference here is it costs 229 dollars so 229 dollars um it's it's a more acceptable that the imaging and the detail retrieval are not better uh, or not or not what they should or what would ideally we would like it to be. So while over there, you know, 295, 369, 299, uh, you know, you, you, you say, okay, fine, it's, it's bearable, because why? The sound is a very engaging sound. So what they make up, they make up the lack of technicalities by being, being very musical. Over here, the same situation. This is a very musical IM, um, but the technicalities ultimately shine slightly a little bit more because of the fact the price is lower, okay? But it's not that they are effectively better than, than those, okay? Uh, technically, the, the Quintet is the best IEM here. It is the one that has, uh, you know, the, 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 the best imaging, the, 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 the best detailed retrieval, the best resolution. Uh, timbre and tonality, um, it, it's, 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 uh, I think it would be a very much a personal thing. I don't think the timbre and the tonality is as good as any one of these other four. Uh, why? Because I like the more this, this more warm, lush sound. Uh, and over there, the timbre and tonality, although good, although, you know, well executed, doesn't offend me. It's a more clinical one when I compare it to this, to this, okay? So it's not that the timbre and tonality isn't good. It's just a more clinical timbre and tonality, while these ones have a timbre and, a timbre and tonality, which is more musical, more, more, more fun, more engaging, more organic. Let's put it that way. Um, in terms then of frequency response, in terms of bass, mids, and treble, um, 
I've, I've mentioned the bass and the mids, the treble over there on that side. So bass is great on any one of these three. Mids as well is fantastic. Here it's neutral, here it's forward. The treble here is very relaxed, non-fatiguing. Over here it's a little bit more pushed, a little bit more forward, uh, which adds that forwardness of the sound, obviously. Um, and over here, that's exactly the same type of, of mid-range and treble that we get. We get a, a more forward mid-range and treble, uh, very much along the lines of the of the SR7 and the, and the Ocavango. So it's again it's not saying that it's better or worse than the than the mid range and, and the treble of the of the h50 it's just a different approach all right uh, the the one thing that i did notice was that with the foam tips uh, it does help to just uh, it's, it's not that with the silicone it's much higher the energy of that six seven k area no uh, but somehow uh, you notice just ever so slightly more the ba timbre while with the foam tips that ba timbre basically disappears okay um, with regards to the, the 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 quintet the quintet great sub bass yes it's probably the one that has the, the most sub bass out of all of them but it, it it has also that because it doesn't have the same mid bass impact as the rest of them have fair enough yes it is a, it is a it is it is got a, a, a precise and, and and punchy bass but it's not on the same level of slam as any one of these of these other four okay uh, mid-range very well executed treble also very well executed the problem uh, with the mid-range of the upper mids of the treble i think on the on the quintet especially when you start cranking up the volume is that because they are using four driver types um, perhaps the 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 the, the planar and the the piezo uh, they introduce it from a certain point onwards in terms of the volume a, um, a a lack of polish just that for me at least for me at least it just starts bugging me slightly so i, I kind of end up getting fatigued of listening to it a little bit louder than what i than you know like i usually like to do so while on these other four i never felt that fatigue i mean here it is really very neutral in these two and well in these three it's a very forward upper mids and treble but it never gets to the point where i'm tired of and i actually want to bring it down now i have to i can actually say that today I enjoyed the the between breaks or of work and so on and so forth. I enjoyed a good four hours of listening here on the on the V12, and I, I couldn't be more satisfied. It is a very very nice and and very captivating I am. It's an I am that grabs your attention and keeps you there, very much like the H50, the SR7, and the, the Ocavango. Um and that's basically it, guys. I mean, I think I've I've kind of positioned well already the 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 V12. Um, for the price, I think, uh, you know, it's 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 very competitive. I mean, you don't have anything else that it's a two DD plus six BAs at this value and the, of this quality. You don't. So, I mean, fair enough. You got the quintet, which is four drivers and and you know very nicely tuned and very nicely built and so on. I'm not detracting anything from it, but this uh, I, I think uh, offers perhaps just a little bit more in terms of of um, hardware what you're getting there in terms of hardware it doesn't stay behind the quintet in terms of build or actually behind any of them the, the build the shell here i mean the, the the quality of the shell of of the of the v12 is on the level of any one of the other shells um, personally the shell that i think is the most uh, satisfying the, the most beautiful is actually the Ocavango, just because of that finish there but you can always have this custom made on the sr7 well, you're basically stuck with what uh, the, these three offer, okay? Um, so, it's a solid IEM, well built. Um, for them, very competitively priced. Uh, I think that for them to really uh, make a solid place in the market, they should work a little bit on improving the overall appearance of the packaging, of the, of the retail package. Just make it a little bit more satisfying. You know, even if it's a simple box, but simple box with a small, with a simple logo, uh, just very, very, done in a very classy way, because this is not a splashy IM in terms of its looks. It's a very classy looking IM. So have a classic box, you know, class, very, very uh, suave, very, very, uh, very um, very smart in its presentation um, and you know continue to offer the, 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 the opportunity or the ability to have a really nice cable with with the IEM and you know tips I would say offer the foam tips as well uh, as uh, another alternative because the, the tips that it brings uh, are okay I mean not not the best um, and that's it guys um, 
it's a definite trick honestly it's a, it's it's a, honestly it's a definite definite solid trick uh, it's not better than in than any one of these uh, but what it does offer is the same sort of style of music the same sort of style of reproduction but at, uh, at a lower cost so if you guys are in the market and you don't you can't reach more than what this you know you, you can't go up that high then i would say that this is worthwhile considering obviously never forgetting that that does offer the tuning switches which both of them which you know to a certain extent will justify the extra price they also have nicer accessories the you know a nicer box with a nice cable so you, you can justify the extra cost that these have over this one but you know if, if again like i said if you really cannot stretch yourself but you want to have that flavor of sound which is a flavor of sound which i really really enjoy i have to admit uh, you know it, it goes away from the the the, the tendency of the harmon style tuning and um, then this is definitely an option uh, and compared yeah to the quintet yes it's a, they've got very different styles of sound um but ultimately you know uh, i think me in my case with what i listen i think i'd i'd uh, opt uh, more times to go for for the v12 than the quintet because it just sounds nicer to my ears basically i'm not again i'm not detracting anything from the quintet it's a very well done very well uh, uh, achieve uh, you know very solid achievement from from qe years it's just my personal preference all right show you the graphs now and we'll wrap it up hi guys and welcome now to the graph section for the uh, ivpiq conch v12 let me just take away these graphs here so that we are left with what we are wanting which is the conch okay so the conch v12 the 2dd plus uh, 6ba this is the graph that it has uh, some of you that will be a little bit more savvy will uh, also be able to identify this graph as a graph which is kind of along the lines as well of the pinon 10th anniversary so it's got a, a really thick base but although you by looking at this you would think oh but this thickness in the space is uh, it's it's going to be way too much it's going to smother things and funny enough no it doesn't happen because the quality of the base that is coming from those two drivers that 10 and 6 mm is very good so uh, although there is uh, you know some 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 bleed yeah it's not something which i found offensive or that really spoiled uh, uh, the presentation of the IM. Uh, everything sits within a roughly a, a window of 68 to over there 78 there so we have just a little bit that sticks above that 10 dB barrier where actually the majority if I bring it down the majority actually sits within more or less an 8 dB barrier okay so uh, you could say a little bit of a, a V L L V shaped signature um very nicely executed mids as you can see i mean very nice even this little rise here around 5k uh, doesn't really you know there's really nothing there and, and again this this rise above uh, you know uh, six seven eight k as well not really problematic at least to my ears because this this uh, energy of the base from behind just helps control that and then nice extension past um past um 10k i think that uh, you know uh, it's a, a, a situation yet because of this extra base it uh, doesn't let the detailed retrieval be as good as it could possibly be okay but at the same time having this space it helps make this area not come forward and maybe be aggressive or anything so all right so let's start now putting some iems here so we can see what's going on first one i'm going to show you is the h50 um and you can see this this kind of the same sort of gene which is a uh, thick mid base okay bleeds a little bit into the mids uh, not as much as you would think by the looking at the graph and then very neutral in the initial part of the or well, the remaining of the mids in the and the upper mids very neutral decent extension it's also got a little bit of a rise over there and extension past 10k they sound very similar apart from obviously you picking up that there's not as much energy in the in the in the female vocals uh, in you know this uh, transition from mids to upper mids all right so that's the h50 and now you're going to start seeing the ones that really look very similar the first one i'm going to show you here is the um the okavango uh, and i mean it, 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 it it's very similar and for those that like the okavango um, you can 
uh, be uh, assured that you will definitely like the, the V12. Same sort of bass, okay? This is the 01 setting, the one that doesn't overemphasize the bass, by the way. Uh, same sort of rise of the mids and the way they are done. Same sort of peak and dip as well, more or less in the same areas. Uh, and extension, everything very, very, very similar. Um, there are some songs that you can pick up the difference between the two of them, you know, the V12 and the, and the Okavango, but for the most part, they sound identical or very close. Uh, and then the next one I'm showing you now, this is the SR7. Uh, again, a similar-ish type of sound, a little bit less mid-bass. A little bit less mid bass, uh, but again, the mids and the dips and the rises and everything the same thing. Uh, I did find that the, 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 the V12, the IVPAQ, does have a little bit more extension. You feel just a little bit extra, but again, not on every song, only on specific songs like From Dust to Dawn. You can feel it from, uh, um, let's see, uh, From Dust to Dawn, um, actually, on, on, on Cecil Norby's. Um, uh, in the sentimental mood, you can also sense that there's just a little bit extra air uh, on on the side of the V12. Okay, and then finally, compared with the um, actually, let me change the color of this so you can see it better. Compared with the um, black, with the quintet, um, it's it's like I was saying. Definitely, you notice that there's less mid bass. Yes, there's a little bit more sub bass extension, and you notice that sub bass extension because of the mid bass not being as prominent. The mids are very similar for the most part. Uh, and the thing here is that, uh, you know, although looking at the mids by themselves, you would think, uh, okay, but if, if you were saying that the mids are a little bit aggressive um, and, and so on, then, well, the, the, it's, you know, the, the, QE, the IVPIQ is almost identical. Wouldn't that be the case? It's not the case just because of that extra energy that we have behind, which helps uh, just tame it down a little bit sonically. Um, and that's it, guys. I mean, like I said, let me just... It's, it's, a, it's a tune that you look at it and you think, okay, but as is many times the case and as we've discussed countless times as well, you know, graphs are not everything. And the, the truth is when you listen to the IEM, you 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 are very impressed. The 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 the, the V twelve is a very impressive item. Sonically very musical. I mean that's the the last takeaway message that I can give you. It's a, that it is a very musical item. Uh, technically it is adequate. Uh, could be a little bit better, but technically. Uh, it's 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 not an IM that was made or tailored for those that are looking for, the, you know, the last twinkly and sparkly and the last detail in the layering and the snow. But what it does offer them is a, a, a fun, engaging, last sound that keeps you there and keeps you, you know, tapping your feet and going for more, which is exactly the same thing that happens with the with the H50, which has very much the same sound, although a little bit less bright. The same thing that happens with the Okavango and the same thing that happens with the, um, with the, the SR7. Of all of them, the IM that probably is the more clinical and the most clinical, um, well, actually not probably, the one that is the most clinical is without a doubt the, the quintet. This is the more cold sounding I am by comparison. All right. Anyway, guys, as always, like and subscribe. Any questions you might have, please feel free to ask me and I'll do my best to answer. Okay. You take care now. Bye-bye.